these in a while. <laughs> the reason I haven't had a secret must-own Nikkor lens in a while is because I've really revealed basically all of them to you. <laughs> I've owned a few of these lenses, and the only reason I bought this lens, again, is because I don't like to make a video about a must-own Nikkor lens unless I have it in my uh, grubby little paws. So, I had to buy one, and uh, then I had to buy another one because... Uh, the person that uh, I ordered the first one from sent me, um, yeah, not only the wrong lens, but the broken lens, <laughs> which, which is the lens that I smashed yesterday. Everything's cool there. She's like, oh my god, I sent you the wrong lens. Like, yeah, I said, this one's broken, by the way. So, yeah, people had a hissy fit yesterday. I made a video where I actually smashed the front element of this totally worthless 70 to 210 lens. and. And some people, it is amazing the reaction of some people. Some people laugh their asses off. And a few people just had a hissy fit. I mean, they just went full on ballistic. It's like, you know, like even if this lens was working correctly, it would still be a $30 lens, right? Right, right, right. And, you know, broken, it would take like $50 of labor to fix a $30 lens. I don't understand some people. Well, I do understand them, but I don't understand people that don't have a sense of humor. Anyway, this is not humorous. This is serious. And ta-da, here we go, a must-own Nikkor lens. Also, I would call this a must-own Fuji lens. Works excellent on the line of Fuji. Um, it only has one issue, and that is zoom creep. What zoom creep? Let me let go of this lens here. Oh, you see that? Most of these lenses have this issue. Boom, like that, okay? Here we are going from 75 millimeters to, boom, 150 millimeters by itself. I mean, but you're usually not taking pictures like this. It's not, a, not an issue. Um, what... This is an AIS lens, a 75 uh, to 150 millimeter f, a 3.5. What makes this lens the tits? Um, it is usually insanely cheap, like 35 bucks, 40 bucks all day long. There's always some knucklehead that wants more than that, but what you should pay for one's about 35 bucks. Why is this lens so incredible? Resolution, phase, gain, and uh, bandwidth. The resolution is incredible. Look, look, let's just face it. The reason why you've not heard any must-own AI, AIS, uh, zoom lenses, uh, you know, certainly tons of must-own prime lenses, you know, from back in the day. This lens was made for four years between 1980 and 1984, I believe. And it's a 12-element uh, construction lens. Uh, it's made in Japan. The, the, the precision fit finish and the quality production is incredible. Um, reason why I've not mentioned any zoom lenses, I don't think I've mentioned any zoom lenses, is because they basically all suck. This is an exception. Not only does it not suck, it's absolutely exquisite. The resolution is incredible. The chromatic aberration is very, very low. Um, uh, the phase, chromatic aberration, uh, the gain is incredibly good. Uh, it's still only like a 7.5 out of 10. I mean, compared to modern day lenses, it's the transmissive. But that's why you call this a daylight lens. I mean, you could use it for anything, but I'd actually prefer to you as this is a daylight lens. Um, bandwidth, the color saturation, wow, oh my goodness. Uh, the bokeh on this lens, on a zoom lens, an f3.5, that old lens, you know, the, no, the bokeh on this lens is wow. Um, all metal construction, obviously. This is a E-series lens, too, or a budget series lens. Um, actually, this is a low element count lens for back in the day for a zoom. Not for a prime, but for a zoom. This lens is uh, excellent. There's been a lot of actually award-winning photographs that have been taken with this lens, including one of them that was uh, very famous, some picture taken in Tibet. Some rainbow picture of some variety. I can't remember exactly the picture who took it way too many pictures and stuff out there to remember stuff like that. Anyway, um, this lens is also a must-have for a Fuji. Um, the bouquet, the, the ease of use, uh, as far as uh, focus peaking, not a problem. I would say that if you use this lens on your Fuji, that it is a daylight lens. You're out there rocking the daylight with this, not, not the nighttime. Even up at 6400 ISO, no, but this is a must-own lens. At so $36, you get exquisite results. It's a joy to use. It's sharp as hell. Uh, chromatic aberration, which is very um, untowards the lens of this uh, period, is really good. So, really good uh, chromatic aberration, meaning lack thereof. Uh, for its day, this is actually a fast lens. Nikon actually had to work hard to come up with this lens. And the price point at $30, $40, bucks, this lens is the tits, 
and I'd call this a must own lens for Nikon or Fuji using a Metabones adapter, obviously so. Um, what is really amazing about this lens for 30 or 40 bucks, even if you're not a manual focus slut like I am, is the color saturation is wow. The bouquet is wow. It is. You see, Sigma stole the word art. And of course, Sigma art lenses suck. Um, but photography is an art form. Uh, I would actually call this a true art lens. Uh, how it renders is very accurate, and yet it is very beautiful. Um, converting these images uh, to black and white because of the micro contrast that it actually does have is rather exquisite. Like I said, you do have one issue to deal with here, and that is zoom creep. So you can see I let go here, I shake it a little bit, or I do it like this, and I you know tap it. Zoom creep. You know, if you know how to actually hold a manual focus a lens like this, then zoom creep is not an issue. If you don't know what the hell you're doing, like place your middle finger right here, you see where I've got it? I'm using this as a wedge. I mean, I've been doing this now for decades. I mean, other people don't know. They're like sitting here and they're like, let me let go of it. And, oh my God, the zoom creep. No, stick your finger here as a wedge. Not only as a wedge for zoom, but a wedge for focusing too. For once you got it nailed in, your finger is there and you're locked in not only on zoom, but on focus. This is a little trick. It's like, oh, how difficult is this trick? Well, apparently it's so difficult that modern photographers don't know what the hell they're doing when it comes to having an old lens like this. It's like, well, how do you use a lens that's got zoom creep? Or, you know, if I've got a lens that has a really loose focusing knob, well, you take your middle finger, yeah, you know where I'm going with this, no, any finger, but really your middle finger here. You wedge it right there, okay? When you lock in, you just apply a little bit more pressure. So I'm locked in for zoom and I'm locked in for focus. Take the picture, boom. Now, so zoom creep or focus creep is not an issue. I need to actually um, attribute the, this particular point to another video. But anyway, this is a must-known Nikkor lens. Something bit the hell out of my leg outside and it itch itches probably damn mosquito. So 30, 40 bucks. Color saturation, wow. Boca, wow. 40 bucks, amazing. Incredible quality construction. Can't beat it, right? So must-own Nikkor lens. Um... If you pay 30 bucks for this lens and you have a complaint, then I think that you have a mental defect because this lens is really good. And that is very, very rare. It's basically non-existent for old AIS zoom lenses. Old AIS prime, prime lenses, lots of really good ones, obviously so. I've made hundreds of videos about old prime lenses. But this is a zoom. And uh, so... Here we go, that's the tits, 75 to 150, f3.5. If you like this video, you can drop me a buck or two, or tell me to jump off a cliff, or tell me to go lose weight, or I could always take a pizza as payment, because right now I'm having uh, dreams about a cheese-covered pizza with my mushrooms and pepperoni. Mmm. <laughs> Catch you later, bye. Uh, I'm crazy, whatever.